Item number, SCP-1241. Object class, neutralized, formerly safe. Special containment procedures. SCP-1241 is to be overridden with a localized signal produced by transmission stations 1241A and 1241B, broadcasting a pre-recorded series of television programs. A cover story regarding the production of SCP-1241 by a local studio has been circulated in case of containment failure. In order to continually monitor the contents of SCP-1241, an apparatus is to be maintained to isolate and record it. Please refer to document 1241B for further information. Update. As of April 9th, 2011, SCP-1241 has no active containment procedures. A story describing the bankruptcy of the responsible party referenced in a previously released cover story has been released. The area is to be continually observed for any signs which would indicate a recommencement of SCP-1241 activity. Description. Prior to December 23, 2011, SCP-1241 is a television broadcast transmitted in a roughly 8x8 kilometer area in Texas, USA. The program manifests every week on Tuesday at 23.30, for an average of 20 minutes. Analysis of the signal has revealed it to be inconsistent with standard television frequencies, and attempted replications of the broadcast outside of the original area have failed to transmit it coherently. It is not normally possible for standard televisions to coherently play signals of SCP-1241's frequency or strength. SCP-1241 resembles a television program of the situational comedy genre. The broadcast consists of multiple episodes, depicting the domestic life of a middle-aged human male and a group of four to eight humanoid canids, who evidently share an apartment accommodation in Los Angeles, California, USA. Each episode possesses the same opening sequence, roughly 30 seconds of music with lyrics sung by an adult human female describing the aforementioned premise, which gives a list of cast members and other individuals involved in productions, as well as giving the title of SCP-1241 as Livin' with Lupus. None of the named people or the individual portraying the character of Lad have been successfully identified. The majority of names are associated with persons not working in an entertainment-related career. For a detailed transcription of the names and lyrics provided in said opening, please refer to document 1241C. The behavior of the entities featured in SCP-1241 has inconsistently varied between typical canine and more humanoid behavior with each episode. Summarized document 1241A. The following is a selection of notable examples of SCP-1241. Episode 1. Hemlock. Summary. The Lad character is introduced, shown shopping in a retail store. The character encounters Martin Wilkinson, one of the canid organisms. Dialogue between the two characters then ensues, during which the Lad character mentions that he is looking for a residence. The Martin character states that he is renting a room in an apartment complex, but is looking for a roommate. Upon later accepting the offer made by Martin after some deliberation and arriving at the complex, the Martin character reveals that the remaining canid entities are also living in the residence. The episode ends with a close shot of Lad displaying shock. Additional notes. Excerpt of dialogue between Lad and Martin. You know, I had a cousin who was a talking hamster. <laughs> really? Where is he now? Dead. He joined the IRA and someone ate him. <laughs> Episode 3. Dog Eat Dog World. Summary follows several attempts made by the Martin character to seek employment after resigning from an office job as a result of a younger individual being promoted to a higher paid position, quote, for the third time this year. The character subsequently briefly gains jobs in several low skill areas, including reception, a janitorial position, and clerical duties in a public library. During the first 15 minutes, the character is dismissed from each for various reasons including repeatedly arriving late, 
ineptitude, and consuming a live chicken in front of several children. Episode 14, Big Wolf Blowing Down. Summary. Follows the main characters coping with an unnamed hurricane predicted to affect their area of residence. The latter half of the episode focuses on their behavior while made to remain inside due to the event. Notably, the video during this period is blurred and shaky, and the majority of the dialogue does not appear to relate to the given premise. See audio log. Instead, describing a device of undisclosed function which appears to be at risk of becoming damaged. Additional notes. Excerpt of dialogue between Lad and an unnamed canine character referred to here as unnamed. Please don't let it break. I won't. It's too important to break. It's been so nice being able to think. I know, I won't let it break. I'll fix it somehow, I promise. I suppose I should just enjoy the moment before I have to go back. At least, it gave me these moments. I'll always have that. Episode 15, Untitled. The opening sequence was not present. Summary. 19 minutes and 32 seconds of footage depicting two malnourished domestic dogs, one Dalmatian and one Great Dane, lying down in a cage. The episode terminated at 22 minutes 59 seconds, with little change in the animal's activity, camera position, or camera angle throughout. Incident 1241-1 On May 2, 2011, SCP-1241 failed to be detected at its regular time. SCP-1241 was not found to be active in the subsequent two weeks. On May 17, 2011, a rented space in Canada was investigated by its landlord following a failure of the individual renting it. One, to make regular payment. Due to the items discovered within the residence, follow-up enquiry was later made by Foundation personnel after the landlord attempted to contact the local authorities. The contents of the locale were found to be four large dog crates, the remains of six dogs of various large breeds, and a human subject later identified as Mr. All showing damage consistent with roughly two weeks of decomposition and, and partial consumption, varying between specimens. Electronic equipment, primarily consisting of that used in recording and broadcasting, including a Panasonic brand video camera, non-functioning, and a tripod stand. A playback video monitor, non-functioning, a boom operator and a VHS recorder player labeled outgoing episodes, non-functioning. A surviving male worminer specimen displayed signs of severe deformity and malnutrition. The subject expired within an hour of being removed from the locale despite attempted medical intervention. An autopsy carried out shortly after revealed that part of its skeleton had been replaced with bones of a distinctly humanoid structure, primarily around its jaw, skull, and legs. SCP-1241 was declared neutralized August 9th, 2011.